When Claire Lomas signed up for the London Marathon, she wasn't aiming to break any records. In fact, being paralysed from the chest down, she knew that just getting to the finish line was going to be a mammoth undertaking. But with the help of a bionic suit and a team of supporters, Claire set out to complete the 26.2 miles. Paul Bradshaw and Inside Out Cameras were there for every step of the way. Meanwhile, rolled oats. Claire Lomax is at nine. In over the first narrow hedge, down through the road crossing. 27 years old, a talented equestrian rider, Claire Lomas had a bright future in front of her. But on the 6th of May 2007, her life changed forever. While eventing at Osberton horse trials, she was thrown from her horse. Her spinal cord was severed, paralysing her from the chest down. Okay. It was hard to start with and, you know, some very dark days, but kind of you push on and I had to find new things to do because the event and all things I couldn't do so it took a while to, to get my life back on track. Last one. You just have to give yourself time and then keep making yourself do smaller things to start with and then you know gradually build back up. For most people it would have been a devastating blow but Claire Lomas is not most people. Since the accident she's met and married Dan Spencer given birth to their first child, Maisie, she's even learned to ski. And it was her background in sport that gave her the determination to carry on. Coming from an um, eventing background, you know, you're dedicated and it's probably more dedication than most sports because you've got horses, so they need doing on Christmas Day and all the time. So I'd used to kind of putting that effort into to doing that before my accident and effort would really be put to the test after Claire decided to attempt the London Marathon with the help of an advanced robotic suit to raise money for spinal research. The training was, I found harder because I knew what I'd got to do, I knew what I set myself, so I felt under pressure. It wasn't like training normally, it was like, come on, we've got to do this. And so the hard work began. The first steps of Claire's marathon were actually taken near Hull, where the company providing her suit are based. She had only two months to get to grips with the technology before the starting gun was to go off. We'd got the marathon target and it was like quite a lot of pressure. And it was frustrating at times because I wanted to improve quicker than I was doing. The rewalk suit uses lightweight braces to support the legs and help rotate the joints. Sensors under the feet detect when weight is lifted and the backpack contains an eight-hour battery. The reality of walking the marathon for an able-bodied person or running the marathon is a phenomenal task. Having met her and worked with her over this period, uh, it, it's a genuine opportunity for somebody to set the standard for this system. My side was to get myself fit and um, just practice as much as I can and just believe that you can do it. And belief was in abundance as race day came round. Not got long now, so getting excited and yeah, feeling ready for the challenge. I still want to think of it now, it makes me feel really emotional because I just didn't expect it. You know, when you've got that kind of response, you can't fail. The reigning world champion with the best in 205 from Kenya. Claire is an absolute inspiration. She puts it all into perspective. And the idea of running for five hours is nothing when you think that Claire's going to do, what, two to three weeks? 2012 is here at last in the London Marathon. As nearly 38,000 runners were cheered through the streets of Blackheath, Claire waited patiently for her own moment to start. And when the moment came, the cheers were just for her. It wasn't just when I stepped over the start line, then they all went. It went on for ages. And it was like probably three quarters of a mile. And three quarters of a mile walking like I'm walking is quite a long time. But people were hanging around and still, you know, right there behind me. She knows it's going to take a long time to do it, but she obviously has got the strength and determination to get to the end. The response is just unbelievable, and you know that 
buzz of the first day kept me going and it, you know, it meant so much to me. It was the first time that anyone had attempted to complete the London Marathon by this means. And it's going to take Claire between two and three weeks to complete the 26-mile course. Four days in and Claire's target of two miles a day was proving difficult as the uphill trek through Charlton and Woolwich took its toll. You know, the first few days it feels like you're not getting, it feels like you've walked so far but you're, you're so far away and then as you got close it seemed to go quicker. Hello, how are you getting on? Oh, yes. out awful, this is a fantastic place to be. I just think it's extraordinary what she's doing and so I wanted to come to show my support uh, to help motivate her. In the morning, oh it was raining again, oh, I don't feel like it, and, um, but what an amazing feeling to want to sit down at the end of the day instead of wanting to get up. Yeah, the Tower Bridge day was um, certainly one to remember. It's raining and windy and you know, umbrellas are turning inside out and that blew me over at a couple of points. Um, but you know, it almost added to the, to the fun of it. I read in a magazine that Claire was doing this and had to come down to support her and she's amazing. Everything about her life, you know, from when it all happened in 2007 to now has been positive. So she could do anything and, you know, I think that's why there are so many people here to support her today. All those people that joined me that day didn't have to come. They'd not committed to anything and they still came. Difficult conditions, but, you know, it was certainly one of, one of the best days in a way. Eight days in and Claire crosses the Thames at Tower Bridge. It marks the halfway point of her journey and despite the horizontal rain and wind, spirits are buoyed by the ever-present support. It's pretty amazing. We're getting there, so just keep marching on. Day 13 and Claire pushes on to Canary Wharf, one of London's financial districts. So what's your total up to now then? Um, look, 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 about 72,000. Wow. I can't That's believe it. it. And the money kept rolling in. That's extremely kind of you. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Good luck. Thank, thank you so much. much. Really appreciate really it. No, thank you so much. Very Listen. kind of you. Thank you. Okay. Normally she's in a garage trudging along on, a, on the treadmill or something, which is a bit more boring. So this has been good for her. Day 16 and the finishing line was nearly in sight. There'd been a handful of press at the start of Claire's journey, but the final day saw unprecedented attention. Ever so proud, I can't, uh, can't put in words how proud, and quite emo an emotional morning, actually. And then the end was finally in sight, a guard of honour by the household cavalry escorting her over the finishing line. I started to cry and I was like, you just stand in front of me because all the press were there. It was great fun and it made it, but I didn't expect it to be quite like that. Six months on and Claire has already set her sights on her next challenge. In April, I'm going to cycle 400 miles around various parts of England using two types of bikes and stopping off at schools um, and do inspirational talks and hopefully they'll get behind us and fundraise. I'm challenging the statement that I was told that my legs will waste but they're no use to me anyway, so I'm going to make them some use. If anyone can do it, Claire Lomas can. She's certainly one very determined lady and we wish her all the very best. <laughs>